Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Welcome to today's message from Harvest Chapel International. We believe the message will be a blessing to you as you imbibe God's truth. God bless you. Working well together. Um, I have tried to title this message, and I'll give you the title of the message in just a little while. But as a follow-up to all the messages we have been hearing with regard to working well together, I trust that we have we are, we are building some blocks within us. Amen. Amen. And um, just to add a little bit, I realize that in the midst of God's people, we have all types of, um, should I say, characters. Not in a negative way, but that's how it is. Amen. Um, by the way, I, God bless you, Reverend Noble, last week head taking care of Jesus's bride <laughs> hallelujah and um, so I looked at Jesus and his disciples and I realized that there were some characters in there as well they were not all the same they were as different as we all are there were some people that were called the sons of thunder. And if you made the mistake of crossing their path, they'll call fire from heaven and consume you. <laughs> so if maybe you need to take a look around. Let's see whether we can identify some sons of thunder. <laughs> some people are laughing. I didn't say anything, no. Who the cap fits? can wear it the thunder people and then there are also the ice cream people but they, they, they looks like they were truly different people and there's the story about Peter who was with Jesus when they came to arrest Jesus and the Bible says that he took a sword and cut off the ear of one of the servants he was wild hallelujah but Jesus used them all and at the end of the day he molded them such that they became a powerful force amen so out of all these the characters that were together with him Jesus molded them and got them together and 12 disciples they changed the face of the world and we are still feeling the effects of it today hallelujah they knew or got to be able to work together but let's not deceive ourselves they had disagreements too such that one said okay i'm not going with you anymore i'm going my way i'll take this one with me and we'll go and the other one said okay me too i'm going this way i'm going with this one they had divisions amongst them but at the end of the day we realized that they came together again and they powered and changed the world wrote books wrote letters which we are benefit, benefiting from today hallelujah and it has been so throughout history amen so what we do in the midst of all this and i've got just a few things to share with you i've titled the message wise things to do to work well together amen so just a few points that we will share so let's turn our bibles to proverbs chapter 30 we are going to look at verse 24 there be four things which are little upon the earth let's stay there but they are exceeding wise amen little things upon the earth but they are exceeding wise you beloved little things can do great things amen I wrote a poem some time ago and um, the poem was about little things little things made the sky little things made the earth little things made the sea and so on and so forth yesterday on the motorway little things caused a, 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 a disruption in fact in the whole of Accra many places little things cause distractions the little raindrops that we see 
they became a mighty river and blocked the motorway amen little things can do powerful things hallelujah because they came together and formed a river they were droplets but they came together and formed a river beloved we here we are more than little things we've got mighty people within here and we can do exploits and 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 move mountains amen oh i thought somebody would clap there be courageous if you want to clap clap hallelujah amen so it says there be four things which are little upon the earth but they are exceeding wise so let's have a look at some of these things the ants are a people not strong yet they prepare their meat in the summer yeah the conies are but a feeble folk yet they make their houses in the rock hallelujah the locusts and this is where we are going to draw the locusts have no king yet they go forth all of them by bands oh people the locusts they have no king they have no leader they don't have a king but when they move when they move that's how come they they, they cause havoc in in egypt the locusts when a, 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 what do they call them a band is it a band or a swarm of locusts or an army of locusts when they are one 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 they look they, they look harmless but when they come together as one they cause havoc they can destroy vegetation destroy farms they can make people um, become what do you call it uh, they, they will bring hunger hunger they can cause trouble and the bible says that these ones they are wise they have no king but we have departmental heads huh we have sectional heads we have pastors we have we have but sometimes our impact is not felt in fact let us say that our impact is not felt so long as this church is not filled then our impact is not being felt hallelujah every single one of them counts together as look when they come together as locusts and they are moving as a swarm every single one of them counts and it's just by little little bitings little ones little small little bitings and they can destroy vegetations upon vegetations because they are a lot or maybe they are together and they move as one remember no king so i think point number one we have to be wise as the locusts they have what purpose they just have one they are moving together i don't know whether it's by intuition or whether by what but they have they, are, they move together and when they land anywhere they are causing havoc the bible says that these locusts they are wise are you with me can we be wise can we be wise hallelujah we can do some mighty deeds together hallelujah and you know the locusts if you because there are so many you will have to try and destroy them all at once and that's going to be very hard and because they are so determined about what they are going to do you can hardly stop them now uh, let's let's look at the last one the ants are a people not strong they are not strong i wonder why the bible used people maybe it's king james that's why they are not strong yet they prepare their meat in the summer let's go to proverbs chapter 6 we read from 6 to 8 it says go to the ant thou sluggard consider her ways and be what be and be what oh preach with me today let's teach together which okay and be wise uh-huh 
which having no guide, overseer, or ruler. Don't go. Stay there. Which having no guide, there's nobody teaching the altar part. There's nobody teaching the tenor part. But they all are able to sing. Those who have been put where they also sing, they know how to sing it. Those who have been put where the trebles are, they know how to sing the treble. They, all, they don't have any guide. Hallelujah. They don't have it. When we are going, like we are all going for evangelism. I mean, everybody knows what they are supposed to do. We put ourselves in groups and we go. Nobody is saying, oh, media, I don't know how to talk. Oh, media, everybody is ready. Everybody is, if you don't know how to talk, you can do something. You can carry somebody's Bible or you can be praying. When no excuses, they just go. Having no guide, overseer. We have no general overseer. <laughs> Having no guide, overseer or ruler. But they do mighty things. They do things that human beings don't do. They prepare ahead for the summer. Hello. I'm getting to a place. I'll say some, maybe some practical things. Little things. Doing powerful things. The Bible says that what? They are wise. They work well together. They work well together. Hallelujah. Provided her meat in the summer and gathered her food in the harvest. Provided her meat in the summer and gathered her food in the harvest chapel. So I want you to ask yourself for us to work well together, work well together with leadership. So the instruction that leadership will give, you're working well together. You are doing what you have to do. It's working well together. Together we are working like ants. And so everybody knows what to do. Let's wake up. Hello. If you are a musician or a, um, in the music department, how are you working on your own? Are you trying to learn some songs on your own? Are you trying to compose some songs on your own? If you are a dramatist or theater person, are you trying to develop something on your own? Are you waiting on your ministry? Because that is all part of the ants working. Everybody knowing what they have to do and staying in rank and doing what they have to do. It's like a formation. More than just rank, position. This one is uh, this. Remember, no overseer, no ruler, no guide. But they all know what they are supposed to do. Their information dance. Everybody has learned the dance. So that if I have to throw my leg this way, everybody's leg is going that way. If I have to, there's some dance. They go this way. If everybody, I don't even know how, to, I've tried and tried with my children. I've never been able to do They always laugh at me at home. If everybody has to do, everybody's doing that. Beloved, am I speaking to somebody? Otherwise, we're not working well together. Hello? And you see, the ants, they are small. So I want to say this. No matter the size of your gift or the ability that you have, if you will just contribute your little bit, ants, everybody contributing their little bit, they build ant hills that you cannot break easily. And it's just one small thing. The Bible says what? Be wise. Please go to that verse again. Go to the ant, thou sluggard. Consider her ways and be wise. Tonight, I want you to consider the ant. So small, oh, very small, than your toe, than your finger, than your hand. Small. But it picks small things and builds big ant hill we all know ant hills don't we so that I, i'm sure i'm not making a mistake 
the ant. Ant hill is solid. You cannot break the ant hill easily. And it comes by every ant contributing something small, very tiny. Beloved, what you have to contribute, you have to. It's a mindset. It's an attitude. It's maturity. Amen. So, point number one. Point number two. Okay. Can you throw away your shyness and put on purpose? Can you throw away your your um, low self-esteem and put on your true identity in Christ? Can you put away shame and put on some courage? Can you put away fear and put on some courage? Because if you don't put on courage, you can't contribute your little bit. Are you with me? Let's turn our Bibles to Romans chapter 12 and verse 7. It says, All ministry, let us wait. Let's start from 6. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us. So we all have different gifts. Amen. And that's what I'm saying about contributing what you have. We all, the Bible is telling us. You see, it's not now that you are going to get the. You all have different gifts. And it's high time for you to realize that you have a gift to contribute. Amen. And I'm, it could be anything. And that's, those are the some things that are going to be listed here. Whether prophecy. Amen. Let us prophesy according to the portion, proportion of faith. Now listen. It is not everybody who will come or get the opportunity to stand here and exercise the prophetic gift. But there are some of you here or some of us here. It's everybody. There is an ability of prophecy gift that you have to express. There are some of you here, you have the gift of prophecy. But maybe your level may not be and you have been telling yourself that me i can't talk but god has been revealing some things to you and you must say it to someone because maybe it's somebody's life is dependent on that we thank god for the mighty prophets that get the opportunity to stand here and minister but within us it will all help us to be able to get that mighty force going and it is not me who is telling you that you have gifts it's the word of god he's saying and having then gifts differing so you have a gift amen different according to the grace that is given to us and you have some grace for that gift amen maybe for me it's not everybody that can compose a song. So I'm able to compose a song. That's a gift and that's grace that has been given to me. So I must do it. Hallelujah. And today, let me tell you, woe unto me if I do not sing the Lord's song. And for some of you, woe unto you if you do not prophesy the Lord's prophecy. Hallelujah. Don't downplay your gift. Otherwise, you answer for it. No matter how it is, you have grace to express that gift. Whatever level it is, even if it means writing it down and passing it on. But you have to express that gift because that is what will help us together. And you see, we pray and talk about, we want to see the supernatural. But the expression is right within us. It's right there. Unless the Bible is lying. It says, 
having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us. Now, it says, whether prophecy, let us do what? Prophesy according to the proportion of faith. Let's go on. Or ministry, let us wait on our ministering. Or he that teacheth on what? On teaching. Let's go on. Or he that exhorteth on exhortation. Or he that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. Amen. So we have gifts within us. Amen. All the gifts that are, lifted in, uh, are listed in Corinthians, they are here in our midst. Cross over from the place of unbelief to the place of belief and see the expression of it. We are crying too much when the things are there. They are there with us. In secondary school, when we used to pray for people to be saved and for the Holy Ghost baptism, immediately the people started prophesying. Where has it all gone? They are still there. Anna, they are there. But cross that place. Cross from the place of um, feeling like your gift is some small thing. To the place of knowing that it is what God has given you. And express it. You are making us hungry. You are denying us of what we need to have. You are denying the house of God. Of what he needs to have. Express that gift. That's how we can work well together. Otherwise we will be lopsided. Maybe the eye is doing, it doing you know, so the eye has become like this. Or maybe the mouth is speaking so much, the mouth is now tired. But the hands are also supposed to support it. So maybe the mouth, the hands has refused to support. So the mouth is using, have you seen a disabled person who has no hands and only legs and has to use the legs to do everything? Let us not become disabled your gift is there express it help us help yourself help the body of christ and i'll tell you why so he that ruleth with what diligence he that showeth mercy with cheerfulness hallelujah when you're showing mercy show it with cheerfulness Mercy could be given. When you are giving, give. Hallelujah. Not that you are giving and you are pulling it. Oh, take it. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm not sure if there's more. Please, let's go on. Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. Amen. Am I speaking to someone this evening? Okay, so this one is point four. We'll call it develop your gift or wait on your ministry or express your ministry. Point four, I think, or point five. Let's serve one another. First Peter chapter four, verse ten. Verse ten. As every man has received the gift even so minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of god amen we have to serve one another amen do you have the niv kindly let's see the niv version so each of you should use whatever you have received to serve others Amen. As faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. Okay. For we dare not make ourselves of the number or compare ourselves with some that commend themselves. But they measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves. There's a lot of themselves. 
are not wise. Amen. I said this if you are talking about wise things to do. So the next wise thing to do is don't compare yourself to other people. Or to put it in a better way, don't let the spirit of competition come in. Amen. When competition comes in, there's a lot of chucking, chucking, chucking. And this one wants to be first. So they'll chuck you so that it can be first. You want to be above everybody, so you chuck the person. Chuck the person out. Then the person cannot go anymore. Then you take and go. Or they'll chuck your back. They'll stab you in the back. Oh, I thought that you were this thing. No, cut it that it out wall. Let there not be a spirit of competition. There's one minister that likes saying this. He says the difference between compete and complete. Because it's like the same word. Compete and complete is a word, is a letter L. And that letter is love. Amen. The difference between compete and complete. Let's complete one another. Let's compliment one another. Amen. Let's have the mindset to make sure that we're working well together. Amen. So the difference is that letter L, which stands for love. Amen. Are you with me? Are you with me? One thing Satan is trying to do, and will always try to do, is to break our ranks. Or spoil the formation. And we should resist him. With love. Hallelujah. First Corinthians chapter 12. Chapter 13. Talks about. Says that we, we, we should not. Love does not keep a record of wrong. Love does not keep a record of wrong wrong. Can you find that verse for me, please? First Corinthians chapter 13. And, uh, yeah, go down. Let's go down. Okay, so these are all things. Beareth all things, believeth all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Yes. Charity never fails, but whether prophecies there be, they shall fail. Whether be tongues, they shall cease. All those powerful things. Did you see? But whether there be prophecies, what shall happen? They shall fail. They will stop. Whether there be tongues, all the powerful tongues that you do, they will stop. They shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish. All the knowledge that you know that is making you puffed up, it shall vanish away. Yes. Please continue. Okay, for we know in part and prophesy in part. But I'm looking for that one that says that uh, no record of wrong. Let me check for it. First Corinthians chapter 13. King James. First Corinthians chapter 13. Okay. So. Are you there tonight? The first point was what? B. Second point. <laughs> Amen. can't find it but I know it's there and it's because I'm standing here has anybody found it love keeps no record of wrong is there one of those verses hallelujah if we want to keep working and working well together that's one of the things that's going to help us okay so tonight all that I've spoken about being together, be wise, let's be wise as those um, little things 
that the Bible says are wise. And one of them was a locust. The other one was an ant. They don't break their ranks. They have purpose. They work well together. They have no leader, but they know what to do. Everyone is purposeful. And I think I pushed it in. Don't forget when my social media things come. Please know that you are a part of this establishment. And I'll be watching you from the online glasses. <laughs> finally, finally, let's turn our Bibles to John chapter 17. John chapter 17. A dying man's words are very important. And these were Jesus' last words to his father concerning, well, not necessarily last words, but it was his prayer for the believers and his desire. Verse 22, 17, 22, it says, And the glory which you gave me, I have given them that they may be one, just as we are one. Beloved, there's a glory that God has given. And the glory or the purpose of that glory was to bring oneness. Remember, the Bible says that he was full of grace and we beheld the glory of the Lord. And what was that? He was full of grace and truth. All that we'll explain another time. But the essential thing is that there's a glory that God has given. And if we see that we are divided and not moving as we should be, then we should know that we have lost the glory and we need a restoration. Amen. We need a restoration. We need a restoration because the purpose of that glory is that the world may see Christ in us and that they may believe that he came that's what the word says where are we I said John chapter 17 verse 23 22 and 23 yeah. it says and the glory which thou gavest me I have given them that they may be one even as we are one 23 I in them, thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me. Beloved, we have a mandate to make sure that the world knows that he, God has sent his son, Jesus. We go out and go and preach. But more so, the Bible is talking about oneness said i in them thou in me and the previous verse spoke about oneness if our glory shines the world will know that christ was sent by god let's bow down Must be one. We must be one. We must surely, surely, surely be one. We must be like the locust. We must be like the ant. We must be like the disciples. We must be as Christ wanted us to be. We must shine. The glory of the Lord we must shine. Tell the Lord tonight, let me shine. Restore your glory upon us. Tell the Lord tonight, restore your glory. Restore your glory. Restore your glory upon us. Let oneness come upon us. Let oneness, let oneness, please open your lips.
your mouth I mean open your mouth and let your lips declare let the light of God shine let the glory of the Lord come upon us again we've lost your glory in many ways oh God we need to shine the world must see us and be drawn to us because of you in the name of Jesus we rebuke every spirit of division we rebuke every spirit of discouragement we rebuke every spirit of low self-esteem we rebuke every spirit of fear we rebuke every spirit of irresponsibility we rebuke every spirit that desires that we will not be according to ranks of God will not be in the formation we rebuke every such spirit and every such working in the name of Jesus we arrest every spirit of division in Jesus name and disagreements we bind you in the name of Jesus we release ourselves to the Lord we declare that we will not keep record of wrong we will walk in love in the name of Jesus we will walk in love yes in Jesus name in Jesus name we are grateful we thank you Lord for your goodness for your mercies and for that which you supply to us in Jesus name Amen thank you for listening to the message visit us on www.harvestinternationalministries.org send us an email through office at harvestinternationalministries.org or call us on 0302-222-372 or 0302-229-109. God bless you.